Okay, so guys, like um, any doubt, like we have done switching part, right? So if you have any doubts, so we can discuss first of all those things, and then we can start the routing part. So just tell me if you have any doubt. Uh, everything is clear to you. Yes, yes, we can start. Okay. Yes, yeah. So today, first of all, we will discuss the packet flow. Okay. You have discussed it like uh, um, in switching, right? So right now we will discuss the packet flow in the routing network. So I will draw a design. Okay, and we'll talk about this. Network. So I just think it's basic, sir. Right? Uh, sorry. Basics are not routing here. Correct basics. Today we will protocol start only basics. Okay. 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 So just one question. Okay. Let's suppose here we have N zero 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 with the mask two five five dot zero 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 zero. Okay. And here we have configured ten zero zero. Seventy two five five dot two five five dot two five five dot one ninety two. Okay. So in this case, whenever I will try to do a communication, let's suppose here we have configured another address that is ten zero 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 three. Okay. Now, whenever I will try to do a communication from this PC, I will say ping ten zero 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 seventy. So what will happen here? This ping will get successful? No. 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 Reason? Because the router will break the broadcast. Um, okay. But we are using here a different subnet, right? Yeah. Okay. Let's say here this IP I have configured on two five five dot two five five dot two five five dot. Um. Let's say. Um, Here I have configured ten zero 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 seventy five two five five dot two five five dot two five five dot one ninety two. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now all the routers are having a different subnet, correct? Mm -hmm. So right now this sub segment look at this segment is a part of different network. This segment is a part of different network, correct? <laughs> Right. Yeah. This here the network ID will be different. Same here the network ID will be different. Yes. Right. So in this case, whenever I will say do ping ten zero zero seventy, this ping will get successful. Or and here, here I have configured default gateway. Default gateway is ten zero zero three. Uh, guys, basically you just need to understand the concept. Okay. If you know the concept, okay. So the things will be very easy. Same here. I have configured default gateway. That is ten zero zero seventy five. Okay. Now, I will just say here ping ten zero zero seventy. So what will be the process in the background? Just give me the answer. The same thing we did in the switching part. Right now we just have single router. Mm -hmm. So okay. the ping will go to ping will go to the default gateway. Default gateway will have the route for. Um, Adi, uh, can you uh, explain me like one by one what will be the real uh, first step? Like we did in so. So first, when we do that uh, uh, ping ping from the PC, um, I want to know about the uh, from this uh, entry also the ARP entries the these type of things. Okay, so first uh, first uh, <clears throat> so first the uh, first there will be a GR packet on the switch. Okay, uh, perfect. Yeah, first that will happen. It will see that it does not have that ARP entry. So it will basically uh, uh, broadcast it, uh, okay. but 
since since we do not have any other switch on the router is there mm-hmm. the that broadcast packet will go to the router and router will draw that correct then right then uh, then what we, then what will happen is the request will go to the default gateway 1000.3 yeah if the then the routing protocol comes into the picture it will it will see whether if it's a st- the static uh, static route or dynamic route whatever it is if it okay has just, one. just one question again okay because these things are not correct the question is um in condition a pc send a packet to default gateway this is the question Can when uh, in uh, pc will basically um, uh, in what condition a pc sends a packet to a default gateway when it does not have that routes in its route print okay right okay. no no akram your answer oh akram is not okay so right now um first of all what we have to check here this pc should have that mac entry for this address right because whenever a pc will create a packet right it should have all the entries like i told you in the switching part whenever a pc will create a packet and the pc don't know the mac address of the user so what it will do it will put the packet on the hold right and if a pc will put it on hold it will try to send a arp request to get the mac address of the user right or wrong yes so right now this address is in is on different network correct so a device never send any arp request to a different network reason a whenever a router will receive the packet that is a broadcast packet so it will drop the packet right yes so how how like this pc will identify like what i have to do here so basically it will check this condition okay we have a condition here in what condition a pc send a packet out to default gateway now the condition is whenever we do a ping device or we can say a pc or end user will do operation okay it will do end operation with the destination okay if the subnet belongs to same network so it will send our request directly to pc if destination address does not belongs to same network so it will send the r request to default gateway okay just check this line again whenever we do a ping from any pc it will do end operation okay so with the destination it will do the end operation if the subnet belongs to the same network so it will send r request directly to pc it means to directly to the destination okay if the destination address does not belong to the same network it will send the r request to the default gateway so i think these three lines are easy right yes. okay yes so again the same question in this condition what will happen here whenever i will try to do a ping to this network okay so it will send the r request to this address directly or to default gateway default gateway default gateway akram uh, atif it's a different subnet right uh, okay okay just tell me one thing akram and atif um whenever i will say here ping 100070 how this device will get to know that is a part of my own network or a different end network through the through the subnet mask 
through the subnet mask right so right now yes. have what, what this pc have this pc just have a mask of its own address right but it does it uh, this pc don't know what is the mask of this address correct yes yes right so it will try to do a, a subnetting here Let, let's say what it will do it will get a um, valid range so it will see my valid range start from 10.0.0.1 till 10.255.255.254 and that yes. belongs to my same subnet right yes yes right atif yeah so like this the device will check so if the subnet belongs to this ad, subnet if the registration address belongs to the same subnet it will consider that ip as a local ip address okay so in this condition what will happen here this pc will create our request directly to this address okay because this address belongs to the same subnet right yes okay uh, but when it will check the sub subnet mask of other pc no no it will not be having power because what we do here we just do a ping with the ip address not the mask right okay okay correct then ping so we are ping will occur uh so yeah, uh, no never 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 because this pc will check okay that that is a part of my local network so i have to send that our request directly to this address network okay. we don't have that user so what will happen here the request will get dropped and this pc will not be able to do any communication to this address never Okay. So always, whenever we do a ping, it will always set this condition. Okay. If the network belongs to the same condition, all good. If the uh, does not belong to the same same network, it will send the add request to the default gateway. Okay. Yeah, but in this case, the it belongs to the same network, right? But the ping will not happen, is what you're yes, saying. Yes, the ping will not happen because this will this will check. Okay, this will think this is a part of my own network, but that is a in the real. That is a part of a different network, right? So it will try to send the R request to the local LAN. It will never receive the request, so that communication will not happen, right? So how to how to make it work then? Uh, basically, we have to change the mask here. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So once I will change the mask here, and if this subnet does not belong to my, then in that case, it will send R request to R one. Okay. Mm -hmm. It is clear. Mm -hmm. So let's try. this one this will work or not so guys whenever like you do any theory part okay for the for these things for the router and switches just make sure you should do the practical okay so you will be having a complete view of the diagram at that time mm -hmm. so what is and operation uh that is just a and operation basically what it will do it will uh, like uh, find its own uh, network id so if i talk about network id so here it will be 10000 correct now it will put the destination address okay so at the time this this address belongs to class a and what is the default mask for the class a that will be 255000 right so it will net ready for that also and now it will check okay if both are same it means that it belongs to the same subnet if not it means that it does not belong to the same subnet okay like this so pc does not understand subnetting uh pc understand basically what is happening here what pc will do this thing we know yeah this thing will happen but what the pc will do pc will find the network id uh -huh. for its own address so it will find okay the the address is configured on slash 8 so my own id will be 10000 right now the destination so the destination address i have configured over there that was 10070 it will think right now i don't have any mask of this destination address so i will consider the default mask the default will be 250000 right yeah now it will find the network id 10000 and finally it will do end operation it means it will just put like this the both means if both are same exactly same it means that belongs to my same subnet if not it means that does not belong to my same subnet okay. finally it is checking the network id for both so, uh, source and destination if both belongs to the same thing same subnet same uh, subnet id so that is my part of my own network okay atif this is clear to you yes and this is clear to you yes yes uh, atif um just give me uh, i can hear you uh can you hear me yep yep so this is clear to you Yes. Yes. Okay. Perfect. So let's 
into the diagram and we'll see that output so i will not use a switch here okay because and i will not explain the entries on the switch how the switch will maintain the we have the part in the switching part okay that is exactly same here so i'll just use these routers to make the communication and i'll capture the packets also will it join the batch uh no i told him to join the session the morning session okay i can't see that screen the routers yeah uh, oh sorry just for me Can you see? Yeah, now we can. Okay. So we have this diagram R one, R two, R three. Okay, I will not use any switches here. So let us configure the addresses interface at zero by zero. IP address ten zero zero. Three. Two four five zero. Two four five dot. Two four five dot. Two four five dot. Two four five. No shutdown interface app on my own. IP address ten zero zero seventy five two five five two five five two five five two five five. No shutdown. Do show IP route. So whenever you want to configure the same range, you have to just uh, verify the mask. Okay, the mask should be different. So this will make the network ID different, right? So for This line, the network ID is ten zero 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 zero. For this line, the network ID is ten zero zero sixty four. Okay. Now R two. Here I will configure interface of zero by zero IP address ten zero zero two two five zero zero zero. No shutdown. Set. F one by one. IP address ten zero zero seventy two four five two four five two four five two five one ninety two. No shutdown. Okay. So first of all, what I will do, um, I will try to do a communication directly to my gateway. Okay. And let me assign the gateway also. No IP. I will disable the routing. IP. Get away ten zero zero zero. What was the address? Seventy five. Seventy five. You have not configured any routing, right? No. Yeah. We are just using two and three as a PC. Okay. We are disabling the routing and we are setting the default gate. Okay. So do ping ten zero zero three. Let's check this communication successful. Do ping ten zero zero seventy five. That is possible. Perfect. Now I have one question. Uh -huh. Niraj. Yes, yes, us. This one in R two F zero by zero and R one F zero by zero. It should be in the same sub subnet. No, no that doesn't matter. No, that doesn't matter. Okay, basically what is happening here let me explain you right now we are using here this three correct okay. so same here so again this pc whenever any pc or any device will do any communication it will always perform the end operation okay now hmm. see so if this pc will do this end operation so it will say my address is 1002 okay and the destination address is 1003 okay so my id right now my address is configured on 255000 right so my network id will be 10000 correct okay right now i don't know the mask of the destination address so i will consider the default class so that will be 
class A, so it will be zero zero zero. So the the ID will be this, correct? It okay, okay, understand. No, that it belongs to my same subnet. Okay, perfect. Now again, the R one will do the same thing. It will say my address is configured on ten zero 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 three on mask two five five dot two five five dot two five five dot two forty eight. Okay, no problem. The destination ten zero zero two. I don't know the mask, the real mask. So I have to use the class default. Correct. Again, in this condition, it will say my network ID is ten zero 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 zero, right? And the default yes. this one that will be ten zero zero. It will say okay. Again, both routers are having the same ID. It will consider that is a part of my own network. Okay. Okay. That is clear now. So that's why this R one will give a reply. They they don't know what is a real network ID, right? They will consider. Yes. If they consider and the answer is same, the end operation is same, so it means yes, they can do the communication. Okay. Okay, boss. So, okay, guys, if you know these things only, okay, so you can just crack any uh, this, any design. Okay. Just okay. do focus on this end operation. If the end operation is successful, okay, it means yes, they can communicate in any condition. Yeah, yeah, but uh, uh, can can you go back to that? Uh... So, so here's a uh, genus. Uh, yeah, so here uh, R two and R three, they are they belong to different subnets, right? Uh, okay. If I talk about R two and R three right now, this one is having two five five zero zero zero. The network ID will be ten zero 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 zero, right? And here it has. Um, Two five five dot two five five dot two five five dot one ninety two. The network ID would be ten zero 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 dot sixty four. Okay, ten zero zero dot seventy. So basically, they are, uh, so how will the uh, let's say if the PC is is attached, mm -hmm. so how will the default how will the PC know the default gateway? Okay, we have to assign the default gateway on the PC. Okay, we have to assign. Yeah, but in in dynamic environments, we do not assign the default gateway, right? Uh, we use a DHCP pool. So in DHCP pool, yes, we assign the default gateway. In the DHCP pool, there will be a default gateway. Yes, hundred percent. Okay, and uh, and the default gateway, uh, what have you configured here? Uh, right now, you always on your our router address. Yes, your router address will be the default gateway always. So in on F zero 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 by zero of R one, the default gateway should be in the same subnet as R two F zero by zero, right? No, no, no. Uh, basically, let's say this is your router that is connected to ISP. Okay. Let's say uh, this is having connection to ISP. Okay. So this is your real router. So here, what you will do, you will use, you will be using some routing protocols. Correct. Where we need a default gateway only to the end user. We need a default gateway, okay? Because they don't know like where to send all the packets, okay? So in that condition, we always configure a default gateway, okay? On the routers, they will be on the PCs. We need a default gateway, okay? Because yeah, but routers, zero by zero should all. F zero so, by zero will also have an IP. The, that IP should yes. be in the same subnet of uh, yes, R two F zero by zero. Yes, correct, correct. That should be in the same subnet, right? Because this network should be in the same subnet. That is mandate. Okay, so what IP have you configured here? Ten dot three. I have configured ten dot three here, and here ten dot two. This one is having ten dot zero dot zero dot three, and this one is having ten dot zero dot zero dot two. But right now the mask is different. Here the mask is different. Here the mask is different. So whenever we deploy these things, we you we try to use the same mask because we have to put yes. addresses in the same subnet. This is just an example that we are using. Okay, and uh, what is the IP address you have used on F one by one of R one? Um, here we are using, I think, seventy-five, and here we are using seventy. Okay. 
uh, can you explain me one more time about that and operation uh, yeah, just, sure. just so in this condition, what will happen here, as we know, uh, let me go back to the diagram here. So right now what I want, I want to do a uh, communication to my default gateway, but right now that is a part of different network and this is a part of a different network, right? But <clears throat> what will happen here whenever this PC will do a ping, it will try to do end operation because this PC don't have any information about the destination mask. So what it will do, it will use its address. So it will say my address is 10002, my mask is 255000. So my network ID would be 10000, correct? Okay. Now it will put the destination address. So let's say this address I have configured as a default gateway. It will consider because right now this PC don't know the mask of the destination, right? So what it will do, it will consider the class. Okay, this address belongs to the class A. So the mask will, it will put the class default mask and it will find the network ID right now if this answer if both answers are same it means yes i can directly communicate to this address to, without any uh, special feature or we can say default gateway okay if by mistake i found like this okay in that condition we need a default gateway okay it means i will get to know this is a this and this like both belongs to a different subnet okay but if we get the same answer, it means yes, both are in the same network. Okay. But uh, but Neeraj, uh, here the subnet uh, subnet mask for 0 0.3 is different, right? So why okay. are you considering yeah. slash okay. a? Because the, this PC don't know the real mask. Because whenever we do a ping, at that time we never define any subnet mask, right? Correct. Yeah. Whenever I will do a ping, I will never define any subnet mask of the destination. So once the destination will receive the packet, that will consider consider that thing, right? It means half portion we are doing here, and the half portion will be done by the destination, right? Okay. It, they are checking everything. They both are checking the things, right? So what this will do? So from my side, everything is fine. It means this half condition is true. So from my side, everything is fine. I have to send the packet out to that address. Now that will consider the same thing. If the answer the half answer is same again. It means yes, we can communicate again. This device will do the same thing, right? It will say my address is 10.0.0.3. Okay. And my mask is 255.255.255.248. But if we have this ID, so 100%, the answer will be 10.0.0.0.0. Right? Correct? Because whenever it will find the network ID, this will be the network ID. Correct? Right, Atif? Yes. Yes. Okay. okay. Now it will put the destination address that is 10 0 0 0 2, right? It will think I don't know the real mask. So I have to put here the class default that is 255000. So what will be the network ID now that, that will be 10 0 0 again. This will say, okay, that it belongs to my same subnet. So I have to send the packet. I have to give the reply. So again, this half portion is clear that is successful and this PC can give reply. Okay. Okay, but uh, one one uh, I understand that part. But my question now is, so why is it not considering the same option for ten zero zero dot seventy? It is considering, yeah, yes. Again, no, the, the 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 PC one dot zero dot two. Uh, look at. Let's suppose my address is ten zero zero two. My mask is this one. So my network ID will be this one. Correct. Enter. We are doing a communication to seventy. Okay. 255000 because right now I don't know the real mask of the 70, right? So what it will do, it will consider this one, right or wrong, Atif? Yes. And now it will find, okay, again the same thing. It will say that address belongs to my same subnet, right? Correct? It means I have to add request directly to this PC. I cannot use a default gateway this time, correct? Yeah. So whenever this PC will send any ARP request, it will send ARP request to directly this PC, not to the default gateway. Okay. Okay. And whenever this PC will send the ARP request to dot 70. So in this line, we don't have that user. So this PC will never get any reply. That's it. So the, uh, there will be two operations in this scenario. There will be two operations. First, uh, it will go to the uh, 70 fail and then it will do again or what? 
no 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 it will always try to do the communication directly to this pc and the communication will not happen here never so then again it will start communication and then go to default gateway right no 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 never never it will always do the same task this this algorithm will never get changed never in any condition no okay so whenever so the whenever a pc is sending a first packet or one lakh packet always it will do the same task always okay so you are saying that it will first go to 70 or no yes it will go to 70 always look at what will happen here finally it will get to know um, this pc will get to know that is a but it will, but it will right correct so uh -huh. it, first of all yeah. it has to create a arp entry right so it will try to send a arp request to this lan and that arp will always be in this network right or wrong correct so that arp entry will always be in the in this network and no one will give me the reply so i will never send any ping packet to the neighbor never okay i will always try to send a arp request first of all if the arp request is not resolved i will never send any ping packet right okay yeah that's it so it will this pc will always try to send our request 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 and the router will drop the request router will drop the request that's it so always this happen here so at what point at what point will the will the 10003 default gateway will kick in no if i will do a communication to this network so never what i have to do here i have to change the mask here if i'll do some changes here so yes at that time it will consider that part as a part of different network and can make a communication okay okay so let's see how we can do this task first let me show this thing okay the theory part is clear agram aate yes yes aate for you this is clear yeah okay so right now let me capture this interface okay and we'll try to do the same communication and we'll see what this pc will do this pc will send the packet out to the default gateway or to the same address okay as we have done, it should send the packet out to the um 1070 directly okay it will actively ask what is the mac address of 1070 okay so let's go to the r2 and just do do ping n00070 and then just say enter so look here This device sending a ARP request to which address ten zero 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 seventy, right? Okay. Mm, I'm getting a reply. Yeah. Oh, let me check. What is the issue here? Do show IP interface free. Do show run interface at zero by zero. This should not happen. Really. N zero zero two. Okay, it will send the packet out to R one. Do show. It's the R two that is broadcast. Okay. Getting reply from C four zero zero. Guys, one minute. Okay, so now this should not happen, really. Let me check this interface.
Okay, so show IPR. Let's check the end. show IPR. Okay, show IPR. Okay, show IPR. Okay, so now I will check both interfaces. Okay, and then we'll see what will happen with the ARP request. So this is a link between like this. So this is the link between um, one and three. This is a link between one and two. Okay. So first of all, we have to consider, we have to check the ARP request. Okay. So if this router is sending R, the same ARP request to this router, so that uh, behavior is different or we can see that behavior is wrong here. Okay. Maybe we are doing the practical, the virtual. That's why R1 is sending a broadcast to another interface, but that isn't possible. Our device never send a broadcast to other interface, right? So let's say this in condition. I will do a ping because right now I don't know the MAC address of 10 to 70. Ping 10 0 0 0 70. Okay, now let's see. So I'm getting a packet from here. Who has 10 to 70? Okay. Okay, look here, the same thing this is doing. Here. This is sending a broadcast to another interface and that is not possible, right? The device is sending a broad broadcast to other interface and that is not possible. So maybe we have some misbehavior here of this device. Okay. If you will do the practical, the physical devices, they will never send a broadcast to another interface. Never. Right. Because that is a behavior of a ARP or we can say a behavior of a router. Whenever it will receive the broadcast packet, it will never send a broadcast to other interface. Correct. I think this is clear. Akram, this yeah, is clear. It's clear. Because right now what is happening here that router is misbehaving, right? Because yes. a device, a router never send a broadcast to other interface. That is not behavior for router. But right now a broadcast packet, you can see that this is a broadcast packet. Here we can see the broadcast. Same here yeah. we can see the broadcast address, right? So the device is sending a broadcast to another interface and that is not the real behavior of a router. Correct. So I think this is clear why the, why they are like doing this thing. Because this is the first time I'm seeing this thing, the misbehavior of a router. Okay. okay. Yeah. Because never, whenever a device will send a packet out or broadcast packet, router will never touch the broadcast to other interface. Never. Right, that is a default property of a router. So what should happen in this condition? We have to change the default gateway. Uh, we have to change the mask here. Okay. So let's change the mask here. Interface F0 by 0. IP address 10 0 0 2 2 4 5 dot 2 4 5 dot 2 4 5 dot do ping and zero zero seven. So now look here, we are sending the ARP request to the default gateway this time, right? Because right now that is not the part of my own network. 
So I will send the packet to 10.0.0.3 only, right? To my default gateway. And the, the default gateway will give me the reply. And look here, we don't have any ARM request here, correct? So only in this condition, yes, this can successful, but the previous condition, that was a different, that was the wrong output we can see, okay? Because the router never sent a broadcast packet to another interface, never. Okay. So I think this concept is clear, right? In what condition the routers will do the communication, in what condition they will not do the communication. Yes. Okay. Next thing. So right now we have done the basic packet flow. Okay. Now we'll discuss what will happen and what the router will do. Basically, whenever a switch will receive a packet, so it will learn the MAC address, it will check the destination, it will send the packet out to the neighbor. Now we'll check what will happen in this router. Basically, whenever a router will receive a packet and, and Neeraj, will, I, yes. have a, I, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, um, if there is a if there is a subnet like um, what do you call I'm forgetting the term the the, the there is like supernet right okay and then there is a then if if that subnet falls under large sub supernet what will happen in that case again same thing whenever a PC will check the condition it will check this end operation it belongs to belongs to the same network. It will send the packet out to the same PC. If not, it will send the packet out to default gateway. Like this, it will do always. Okay, it will send to the default gateway. Yes. It will always check this condition, always. Even a router, everyone, check these conditions. Mm. Okay. Now it's clear? Yeah. Okay. Now we will check like what will happen here whenever a router will receive the packet and will send the packet out to another interface. Okay. The mechanism in a single router. Okay. So basically the name is the concept name is switching method. So we are saying switching method but this is switching off a packet from one interface to another interface okay mm -hmm. so we have three types of switching the first one is any idea guys the switching type of router atif any idea Method on a router. Um, uh, Akram, any idea? Are you talking about the data plane, control plane? Uh, no, that is a different thing. Because it will receive a data plane also or control plane, it will do a oh, like it will send one packet from one interface to another interface. So that's switching method. Okay, let me tell you. The first one is process switching. Have you ever heard about this one? No. Pass switching. I think this one you know, Seth. Seth uh, suspects press forwarding. Okay. Yeah. Okay, hey guys, uh, just take a five minute break, huh? then we will start. Okay. Okay. Okay, so first of all, we have process switching, but we never use process switching. Okay, but we'll discuss what is process switching. And then we have fast switching. So basically, whenever you will check your um, any device that is non Cisco device. Okay, so you will always find fast switching. So on all open standard device, what we find fast switching. On Cisco, we find self switching, but if we disable self switching, it will fall back to fast switch. Okay. So, if I will disable, let's suppose self on a Cisco switch, okay, so that will fall back to the fast switching. But we cannot disable the fast switching never. Okay. It will always be a fast switching. So let's discuss one by one what will happen in the process switching. Then fast and then press forward. 
Okay, so let me talk about the router component. So we have two things on a router. Or if I'll talk about a layer three switch. Okay, so whenever any device will do a layer, okay, a routing, we can say. So it has two components. The first one is RP, that is your route processor. Okay. Second one is SE, that is your switch engine. So your route processor will be responsible. to maintain routing table and will be responsible to handle control plane. I think you know about the control plane, right? The switch engine will be responsible to maintain our table. So we have two things. One is RP, one is switch engine. Switch engine will will uh, switch engine will be having your R table and the route processor will be having your routing table. This is clear. Atif Akram. Yes. Any doubt in this one? So uh, what is this called? Uh, uh, pump so we have two components. One is route processor. Okay. One is switch engine. So on a single router, we will be having these two things. Okay. Now, basically these are like your, um, we have just two, we have, we have just two methods, right? Because our router will maintain two, two things. One is router table and one is R table. Like if we talk about a switch that will just maintain a Mac address table, correct? So we have single mechanism in the, R, uh, in the switch that is Mac address table, but on the router, it will maintain the routing table. It will maintain the RF table. So for these two things, we have two different components. One is RP, one is switch engine. Okay. This is clear now. Yes. Akram, uh, any doubt to this point? Now, the next thing here, So I will divide this into two part. Half portion I will use for the RP. The next half portion I will use for the switch engine. So right now let's suppose this router has all the routes in the router table and RP table in the switching table, switching engine table. See here we have another PC here we have. This is having address 10001 0, 0, with MAC address A. This one is having 10002 with MAC address B. This one is having 20002 with MAC address C. And this PC is having 20003 with MAC address D. So first of all, this switch engine will be having all the entries. Let's suppose this is your F0 by 0. And this is your F zero by one. Okay. So this will be having everything in the table. Okay. So let's talk about only these four entries. What the, how the router will maintain the things. It will say, I have one entry that belongs to N001 with the Mac address A and the timer I'm running this one on which interface F zero by zero. So timer it will run. Let's suppose timer is one minute. Okay. And this is the Mac address. It will say, I also have 10002 interface. The MAC address is B, but this is my own interface. So I will not run any timer and the interface is F0 by 0, right? So using this timer, if the device is not running any timer, it means that is my own physical MAC address. Okay. 20002, it will say C, it will not run any timer and will say F0 by 1. It will say 20003. The MAC address is D on F is zero by one and it will run the timer here. Let's suppose one. Okay. So whenever a device will get a packet, let's suppose it has to send the packet out to F zero by zero to F zero by one. It will use this address as source, this as destination. Same here. If I want to communicate to this one will be used as this as source and this as destination, right? Now, 
so this is the table of switch engine okay so what will happen here so let me so this is the table of this device okay now this user want to communicate and want to send 1000 packets to 2003 okay so what will happen here this device will send the first packet out okay no problem switch engine will receive the first packet now the process the first process switch engine will get the first packet what it will do the second thing first of all the packet will be like um the source ip will be 10001 right the destination ip will be 20003 the source mac will be a right can you tell me what will what, uh, what will be the destination mac here whatever the default gateway mac will be perfect that is b that is router address so it will be b here perfect okay so switch engine will get this first packet what it will do the second task it will remove layer 2 information okay or we can say um okay the term i will tell later right now what it will do it will remove layer 2 information from here okay so it will be having a clean packet now what it will do after removing these two things these uh, the mac addresses it will send the packet to rp okay the fourth step rp will check the destination in routing table and will find best exit interface to send the packet to neighbor okay so now what it will look at what is happening here This PC is sending the PC sending the packet out to this router, right? So switch engine first of all will receive the packet, will remove the layer 2 properties and will hand over the packet out to route processor. So route processor is having a routing table. So in the routing table, it will check the entries and it will find, okay, this interface is the best interface to make the communication or to send the packet out. So what will happen here? So once the device find a best, best interface, so right now the best interface is F0 by 1 to reach 20.003. Okay, now. So this is that information that the router will find. Correct? Now the fifth step. RP will hand over this information to switch engine reason we have to add some new headers right say once switch engine will get this information it will try to find new mac address for f0 by 1 okay so right now it will check the interface do i have this interface yes it, it has an interface right the seventh thing it will add new L2 information and will send the packet out to interface. Okay. So what will happen here? The RP will hand over the information to switch engine that uh, to reach 2003. The best interface is F0 by 1. It will check the RP and it will see the RP entry. Yeah. And we'll be using C and D, the new MAC addresses, and will encapsulate the packet and we'll send the packet out to the link and this guy will receive the packet. So this process is clear. Atif Akram, any doubt in this process? No, no. Just check the steps again, okay? Just tell me if you have any doubt so I can explain again, no problem. Just check these conditions.
So, uh, can you explain the fifth point again, please? Yeah. So, okay, till this point, I think the this point is clear, right? RP, yeah, so we'll check the yeah, table that, and we'll find that, the best path. Okay. So, once it will be having the interface, the best interface, it will just say to switch engine because RP having information that uh, who can add a new header. Only switch engine will be having power to add a new header. Reason that is having this R table, correct? Yeah, R table. So, RP will hand over the information to switch engine just to add a new header because that is having capability to remove and to add a new header or we can say to uh, decapsulate and to encapsulate a header. It will check the information and will add C and D to the packet and will send the packet out to the name. Okay. So will it not like just wait for the response and then add it to the table or? No, instantly within. So this process like will be in the millisecond. Okay. Yeah. And okay. Any doubt to this point? Can you scroll down and look at six seven? Yeah. Well, then we have to find out new MAC address for F zero by one. So that F0 by 1 is for the the other interface, right? Yes, correct. This is the interface because RP is saying to reach this address, you have to use F0 by 1. Okay. And this process. Okay, I'm clear. The process of decapsulating and decapsulating or L2 header and encapsulating a new L2 header is called as packet rewrite. Okay. So this is called your packet rewrite. Rewrite it means a device is getting a packet, is doing some modification, and then is sending a packet out to the neighbor. Okay, so to remove a layer to header, and then it will add a new header, new layer to header. This process is called packet rewrite. Okay. Okay. Now, Akram, any doubt to this point? No, no, no. Okay. So now, in this condition, this uh, process switching. Router will repeat the same process for all the packets. Okay. So look here. What is what will happen here? Whenever this device will receive any packet, it will do the same task. Those seven steps it will follow. Okay. So packets. All the time. All the time, yeah, all the time. So in the process, so this is the uh, misbehavior of a packet switch. We can say whenever a router will receive a packet, it will check if that is running process switching. So every time, if let's suppose that is getting one lakh packet, only one packet or two lakh packet, it will do the same process for every single packet. Okay. So the issues here we have. Okay. The first issue, basically here, RP is. Responsible to handle control plane and forwarding plane, right? Yeah. The RP was built to just maintain the control plane, but right now what is happening here? RP is responsible to handle all the control plane and all the forwarding plane. So what will happen here? Due to this reason, if router will get packets from all the users, so maybe. CPU utilization will be high and router will stop processing. Okay. So in this condition, yes, we can have this issue because right now what is happening here, RP is responsible to handle all the control plane or the forwarding plane. So whenever let's suppose they are running a protocol EIGRP, 
okay and due to this condition maybe they will not be able to send hello packet to each other because if the cpu utilization will be high maybe they will not send the packet out to each other so at that time if they are not sending packet out to each other they will break the neighborship they will break the communication right yes so this is a big issue in the process switching so right now a days we never use a uh, process switching we always use fast switching or we use self switching okay we never use process switching due to this reason okay so the fast switching the self switching is basically depend on the process switching okay the concept is uh, from the uh, process switching we just have some enhancement in the fast concept okay so if the process switching is clear so the fast switching and the self switching will be more clear okay so if you have any doubt in the process switching just ask so the the what we learned just now what is just the router's components right router process yes. no so basically we have those are the router uh, components rp and switch engine okay we are discussing here the switching method of a router okay so these are the component rp and switch engine so th these two things will work on every scenario in the process switching fast switching self switching in all the conditions if routers are working if they are sending the packet switch any in any condition okay so these are components They're like these are uh, these are like um, memory of a switch we can a router we can say because using this the router will build a routing table using this the router will build a r table right so yeah we have discussed the methods of a switching on a router Okay. So just tell me if you have any doubt in the process switching, because the next fast and self will depend on the process. So uh, I am clear about route uh, processor and switch engine, okay. but we are not about the process switching, right? Yeah. Basically, we have two different things, right? these two things we will be having every time if i will not talk about these two things but yes whenever i will talk about a router okay if i will say routing table it means route processor if i will say r table it means switch engine okay it is like uh, if i will say mac address table okay so instantly you will think about a switch right mm -hmm. if i talk about uh, r table it means you will think about a router but right now no need to think about the router now we have to think about if i'll say r it means switch engine will be responsible if i take if i'll say routing table it means route processor will be responsible okay so these are just a component that's it nothing else okay so these components are fixed for a what for the routing table for the r table that's it okay mm -hmm. what firewall that is fixed for the um, like your security purpose right like here we have this component that's it okay Atif Akram, any doubt to this point? Now let's discuss the fast switching. The same diagram. Let me use. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, Miraj. Uh, again, I'm sorry. I might be repeating myself. So, so what is process switching then? It is the same as uh, what you explained. The uh... uh, process switching we have done, right? We just did process switching, right? No, we did router's components, right? Route processor. No, 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 no. Router process. These router component we will be using in the process switching, fast switching, then self switching also. Oh, okay. okay. So, so this one is uh, the. So this one is actually the. Uh, we we use process switching in uh, all the all the. Uh, we use switch. okay. These two components we will always be using in these three scenarios. Okay. Okay. The switching method basically a switching method from one interface to another interface. But in in between the router, we have two things. One is router processor. One is switch engine. So they both will work in all the cases. Okay. Okay. These two are the common component that all the all the devices will be using, and these are the methods that we use on the router. Okay. 
so the 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 process switching right this process yeah. switching is uh, is is these two things route processor and switch engine uh yeah well, if i want to do a process switching okay basically we have to use two things one is rp one is switch engine okay okay so look, okay let me explain you one more thing here yeah, let, let me clear this thing this happen here let's say we have two routers okay so this is the router this is the name the name is a uh, route processor okay and this router name is switch engine so what i have done here i have said i have configured here some configuration so this are uh, this router is just responsible to handle or to maintain the routing table okay so this router will maintain the routing table and this router will maintain the rp table okay but i know uh, whenever i need a communication i need to look the routing table i need to look the rp table also correct right so what i did here now those things let's suppose here we had a different hardware here we had a different hardware now that different hardware so we are using a single router now okay so this is a single router so now whenever any device will send the packet out here okay so these two things these two uh, para, these two component will handle those things and will send the packet out to another router now that doesn't matter we are using a process switching fast switching or self switching always in these three types of switching the router will receive the packet on the interface and will send the packet out to another interface now what will be the mechanism behind these things so that is a part of process switching fast switching and self switching okay so basically these are the two components on a router okay now it is clear yes the, yes i am uh, i am absolutely clear about this so what i'm asking is you said that we uh, the process switching is over so what is process switching process switching in the process switching like whenever a device will send receive a packet so it will re repeat those steps these seven steps for every single packet okay so that is a issue R reason because right now what is happening here if rp will handle all the control plane and the forwarding plane also so this rp will get slow okay that okay. this was the process switching and this was okay so so the seven steps you showed you showed us is 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 the process switching steps yes correct and that will be applicable for each and every packet for even let's suppose we are sending one lakh packet in the process switching okay so rp will handle all those one lakh packet okay okay yeah okay that's okay. clear now yes okay now let's talk about the fast switching what will happen in the fast switching Same diagram I will be using here. Let's just stand with my address A. Stand zero zero two with my address B. Twenty zero zero one with my address C. Twenty zero zero two with my address D. Okay. Now, the same thing. So let's suppose we are sending one lakh packet. Okay. So. switch engine the router is receiving the first packet so in first condition i am talking about the first packet okay now what will happen here the device will follow these four steps okay it means it means what will happen here switch engine will receive the packet it will remove the latent information it will hand, hand over the packet out to rp rp will find the information okay so right now rp will check the destination in the routing table and will find the best exit interface to send the packet out to the neighbor okay so ab usne kya kiya it find this entry okay now what it will do the fifth step 
RP will hand over this information to switch engine. Okay, the same thing we did in the process switching. But in the sixth step, the device will just directly check the table to find the MAC addresses. But here in this condition, it will do a different task. In the sixth condition, what the switch engine will do? Switch engine will maintain this entry in cache. Okay. okay. For forwarding for other packets. So this is the new step here. The switch engine will maintain that entry as a in the cache. Okay. So this is the new step in the fast switching. What will happen here? So till fifth step, everything is same. Okay. Now the sixth step for only for the first packet we are discussing right now. The switch engine will maintain that entry in the cache for the forwarding for the packets, for the other packets, the remaining packets. Okay. Now the sixth step, the seventh step, it will, it will add new L2 header or we can say it will find the information. It will find the MAC address and we'll add new L2 information. The eighth step, it will send the packet out to F051. Right or wrong? Any doubt at this point? So, uh, okay. mm -hmm. tell me. Mm, sixth uh, switching and maintaining. Uh, okay, so what is the seventh step? Okay, the seventh step it will find the MAC address and it will add a new enter information. Now, what is happening here? We are just adding a new line. Look here in this one, it will not be able to maintain a cache entry, right? But in the fast switching, the device is capable to uh, 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 maintain that entry in the cache, right? Okay. Instead of uh, putting everything on the app table. Yes, correct. Now what will happen here? But this will happen only for the first packet. Only for the first packet. Yes. Only for the first packet. If I talk about the remaining packets. Mm -hmm. The first step. Will remove L2 header. The second thing switch engine will check the cache entry the third thing switch engine will add new l2 header and fourth step switch engine will send the packet to actually Okay. So this will be the steps. Any doubt to this point? So for the remaining packets, it will do this task. Okay. So in this condition, what is happening here? RP is just responsible to handle one single packet of the flow, right? Mm -hmm. So here RP is responsible to handle one single packet okay but again we have some issues not issues uh, let's suppose we have one lakh user okay or let's suppose uh, what is happening here i'm the facebook server okay so at that time i will receive one lakh packets right i can receive uh, even 10 lakh packets correct right or wrong because a router let's suppose there's a facebook router so it has and numbers of customers, right? So maybe it can receive one lakh packet, two lakh packet, ten lakh packets, right? So at that time, again, it is handling a lakh lakh numbers of packet, right? So again, RP is responsible to handle the forwarding pin also, but it is maintaining, it is handling a single packet. That is that is a good thing, correct? Yeah. Right. So on the on all open devices, we have this fast switching mechanism. 
it means it will just handle one single packet of the flow okay okay any doubt in the fast switching no can you, can you scroll up ah sorry yeah, can you scroll up a little bit yeah yeah little bit more no no sorry uh, scroll down uh, i want to capture the till eight, all eight points along with the first packet uh, i will send this uh, file to you don't worry i think you have the link right yeah yeah i always upload the paint file also Done. So, any doubt to this point? No. Um, Akram, any doubt to this point, bro? Hello, Akram. Um. Okay. Now the next thing, the self. Now we'll discuss what is the benefit in the self. Cisco Express Forward. So in the real time, we use Ceph or uh, the Ceph, fast. On, on Cisco device, we always use Ceph. If I talk about open standard device, we have to use fast, right? Okay, but uh, we don't know. Let's say we are connecting our our device to the uh, to the ISP's device, right? Okay. So we usually do not know what device they are using. So in that case, what? Yeah, that is a, a headache of an ISP, right? Okay. Whenever ISP router will receive the packet, the device will check. I'm running Ceph, I'm running fast switching, or I'm running process switching. So it will route the packet at the process switching network. But basically, uh, like yes, uh, in the industry we we always we use open devices, so they will be using fast switching. So no no doubt, yes, they use they use fast switching. Okay. Because they have a single option, they can use fast switching, right? They cannot pull back to the process switching. Right. So yes, we always use fast switching and self switching. For device, yes, we can use both. We can use self, we can use fast. On the open standard devices, we always use fast. That's all. Okay. So here in the case of Cisco, let's suppose this is a Cisco router and we are running here self. So what will happen here? This device will maintain one more thing. That is self tables. Right. Okay. So in this condition, the device will maintain self tables. So whenever what will happen here, the Cisco device maintain self table. So whenever RP gets any information. It will just send a single copy to self table also. Okay. So let's suppose it has some entries. The router routing table has some entries. Uh, 10 root 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 20 root 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the same thing it will just say to the self table that I have these entries 10 root 1, 10 root 2, 10 root 3, and Let's say 20 is one. Okay. So I have these entries. So what will happen here? The RP will just ex will just do copy and paste. Okay. A mirror copy to the self table. F0 by 0. Okay. F0 by 1. Okay. F0 by 1. Like this. This is example. Okay. So in this condition, what will happen here? The switch, the self table is having everything, right? And it has the best path. So whenever RP
send the information so before sending information it will do a lookup and will just send test exit interface and next home okay so what lookup it will do what we'll discuss let's suppose this rp has some routes like if i want to go to 1.1.1.1.1 the next stop is 2.2.2.2.2 okay if i want to communicate to 2.2.2.2.2 the next hop is 3.3.3.3.3 okay same here it has some routes to reach 3.3.3.3.3.4.4.4.4 now 4.4.4.4.4 is reachable via 10.0.0.3 okay and 10.0.0.0.3 is connected to f0 by 0 like this okay so whenever your rp so this is the table of routing table right this is your routing table okay so whenever this router will put the route in the ceph table let's suppose here i will configure the ceph table okay so what will happen here the routing table will say if you want to communicate to 1.1.1.1.1 use f0 by 0 with the next of our friend 000 let's suppose 3 okay we will say if you want to communicate to two network again the same thing we have okay if i want to communicate to 33333 the next op is 10003 if you want to communicate to four also the next interface will be f0 by 0 and the address will be 10. it means it will routing table will do all the lookup and will just do the best thing in the ceph table okay so now the ceph table has these things correct it means the answer it has already correct if i talk about self uh, the fast switching the self switching at that time once a routing table will receive the information so at that time it will do this task correct right or wrong so whenever a routing table will receive the packet in the self switching sorry in the fast switching in the process switching at that time only it will do this lookup if i want to communicate to 11111 what is the best interface that is f0 by 0 but in the self switching once it will receive the information it will instantly do copy and paste to the self table but before it will do a lookup in the table it will do a lookup to the interface and will copy the same information in the self table okay now what will happen here for all the packets i'm talking about the first thing switch engine will get the packet switch engine will remove l2 information the third thing switch engine will check self table fourth switch engine will add new l2 information okay and finally it will send packet to okay so in the self switching the device will do these four steps okay so this is your self switching so in the self switching the routing table or we can say the rp will not be handle any single packet of the flow never okay any doubt at this point i think this is clear to you uh yes okay so this is all about the switching method hey, uh, once again one one uh, question i had was uh, i didn't follow but what is 111 to 2.2.2.2 okay what that is a route uh let's suppose i have configured a static route if i want to communicate to 1.1.1.1.1 what is the next stop that is 2.2.2.2 okay if i communicate to 2.2.2.2.2 the next stop is 3.3.3 like this let me show you this thing we can check this in r1 ip route 1.1.1.1 2.2.2.5.2.5. The next stop is 2.2.2.2. Okay. IP route 2.2.2.2.2.5.2.5.2.5. IP route. IP route four. So this is the I'm creating the routing table, right? Mm -hmm. Like this, we create a routing table. Okay. Do show IP route. Let's check the routing table. What I have? 
if i want to communicate to one i have to go to r2 again how i can reach to r2 why r3 how i can reach r3 why four how i can reach four why this address and how i can reach this address this is in the table okay it means that f0 one by one right or wrong yeah but what is the logic to it um uh logic no no i'm saying here if we have this condition because whenever router will receive the packet it will do a lookup okay it will do a lookup and will just send the best interface that's it, okay? because first of all i will not be having like this never i will be having a direct path but in condition i will be having some conditions like this so it will do a lookup and this is called your recursive lookup okay if a device is checking multiple uh, conditions multiple statements to reach a destination that is called recursive lookup okay yes so maybe if we have this this type of condition it will do recursive lookup but what it will do if i'll check the ceph table do so ip ceph 1.1.1.1.1 look here the device is just saying me your next stop is 10070 and your best interface is 1 by 1 it means in the ceph table it will be having the real path in the routing table it will maintain maintain the entry okay in the ceph table it will be having the real best interface right uh that is f1 by 1 okay so uh, yeah. finally it will do okay. yeah correct yes if i talk about uh, fast switching so in that once rp will receive the packet at the time only it will find the final interface right but here in the ceph table once it will build the table it will just put the trout in the ceph table the best interface okay the final interface we can see mm. clear yes okay so for today we have done okay tomorrow we will start with um the routing decisions and these things will start okay so maybe tomorrow we will finish these things okay okay so today okay. we have done okay so tomorrow we will start okay same time okay sure okay bye okay thank you bye take care